Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you the entire installation process for Fedora 43. You're going to see the setup process every step of the way. We're going to start out by creating installation media and then we'll get Fedora installed on our computer. Now this is going to be a full installation tutorial, which means we're going to be setting up Fedora as the only operating system on our computer. So be sure you've backed up anything important before you get started. Now, if you haven't had a chance to check out Fedora 43 as of yet, I recently reviewed it on this channel. So if you're curious what I think about this new release, then definitely check out that review. I'll leave a card for that review right about here. And Fedora itself is a fantastic distribution. So if you've made a decision to go with Fedora, well, you've made a great choice. I really do like Fedora quite a bit. And one of the things that I love most about it is how tightly integrated the GNOME desktop is. In fact, Fedora is one of the best GNOME related distributions out there. So if GNOME is your desktop of choice, well, that's another reason why you've made a great decision. Fedora has always done a fantastic job with the GNOME desktop. Anyway, as I've mentioned, you're going to see the entire setup process for Fedora 43 in this video. So let's get started right now. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create the installation media that we'll need to install Fedora. And to do that, we'll open up a web browser and download a special utility. What we're going to do is download the Fedora Media Writer. And to get that utility, what we'll do is navigate to fedoraproject.org. And here we see the latest release is version 43. So I'm going to click on that. And then right here under Fedora Workstation, I'm going to click Download Now. And if we scroll down here, we'll see the Fedora Media Writer. And the Fedora Media Writer is the easiest method for creating installation media. As you can see right here, there's a version for Windows and Mac, as well as Linux. So regardless of what your current operating system happens to be, chances are you're covered. Right now I'm recording this from Windows, so I'll download the Windows version. And here it is right here. So I'll click on it. And as you can see, the download is complete. So what I'll do is open it up. And here we have the utility. So all we have to do is install it. So I'll click I agree. I'll click install. And this process should happen pretty quickly. In fact, it's already done. So I'll click next. And then I'll click finish. Anyway, here we have the Fedora Media Writer. And this process is very simple. What I'll do is leave the selection on download automatically and I'll click next. I'm going to download an official edition and what we're going to be installing is Fedora Workstation. So I'll click next. And the next thing I'll need to do is insert a flash drive. The flash drive will be converted into Fedora installation media. That also means that anything you might have saved on that flash drive will be erased. So make sure that you don't use a flash drive with anything important on it. Anyway, I'll insert my flash drive right now. And as you can see, it's detected my flash drive. So what I'll do is click download and write. And at this point, it's creating the installation media. It's going to take some time for this to complete. So what I'll do is fast forward it in post and I'll be right back. All right, so the process is finished. We now have Fedora installation media. What we'll need to do at this point is boot our computer from that installation media. And all you should have to do is insert the flash drive into the computer that you want to install Fedora onto and access the boot menu as you start your computer. The key that you'll need to press to activate the boot menu varies from one computer to another. But what I'll do right now is overlay a table on the screen that shows you some of the more common options. Basically what you do is insert the flash drive like I mentioned, then you'll access the boot menu and select the flash drive as your boot option. Once you access the boot menu, all you have to do is select your flash drive and the Fedora installer should start up. And here we have the boot menu for my computer. And yes, this is an actual computer. I'm using real hardware and not a virtual machine for this tutorial. And if that's something that you think is awesome, then be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV. I always prefer to use real hardware for all of my videos whenever possible. Anyway, all I have to do right here is select my flash drive, which is the second option in my case. So I'll press the down arrow, I'll press enter, and let's start up the installer. 
And to save some time, I'm going to choose the first option here. It's a good idea to test your media if you have the time to do so, but I've already tested it in my case, so what I'll do is choose the first option to start Fedora. And now that the installer has started up, we're actually running Fedora right now. Even though we haven't installed it yet, we're running Fedora in live mode. If you haven't ever used live mode in a distribution before, it's basically a demo mode. Now the thing is though, you're not going to get full performance out of a distribution if you're running it from a flash drive, unless you have a really, really good flash drive. So there's going to be a bit of a performance hit, but what we do have here is a close enough approximation of what a distribution is going to be like once we do install it. Anyway, here we have the actual installer, and we have an option right here to install Fedora. And if you wanted to, you could jump right into the installation by clicking that button. However, what I'm going to do is click Not Now, because it's important to test a distribution before you install it. I see messages on Reddit and other forums all the time when it comes to people installing a distribution and then finding out that it doesn't work. But since we have live mode, we could find out exactly what works and what doesn't before we install it. The first thing that I recommend you test is Wi-Fi if your computer does have a Wi-Fi card. After all, if we don't have internet access, then we can't do a whole lot with our distro. In Fedora, what we could do is go to the upper right hand corner here and give it a click. And we'll see a Wi-Fi option right here. We'll click the right arrow next to it, and that should give us a list of Wi-Fi networks. Now, if you don't see a list of Wi-Fi networks, that might mean that your Wi-Fi card is not compatible with Fedora. And that's yet another reason why we're testing it before we install it. But the fact that I do see wireless networks here is a really good sign. So what I'll do is click on one of them. And let's see what happens. And in my case, I am connected. You see the Wi-Fi icon right here is lit up, so that means our internet connection should be ready to go. In order to make sure of that, what I'll do is click right here to access the Activities Overview screen. And here we have an icon for Firefox. I just want to make sure that internet access is truly working, so I'll click on it. And I'll just visit a website to make sure. And as you can see, everything appears to be working. If we want to make double sure, what we could do is click on a video or something like that. That'll make sure that video performance is good and also that our sound card works. Now I'm not going to spend any time when it comes to testing video and audio in my case, because I do know that this computer is compatible with Linux. But basically all you have to do is make sure that all of your hardware is detected and fully working. For example, if you plan on using multiple displays, make sure you connect your other display. And also, if you have a printer or scanner, you may as well test those too. Once you have a general idea of whether or not Fedora is going to work on your computer, we could go ahead and install it. In order to do that, we'll access the Activities Overview screen. And we have an icon for accessing the installer right here. So I'll click on it. And here we go. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to let you know about an ebook I created recently that'll help you out if you're considering switching your computer to Linux. In fact, it'll give you 10 tips for making the transition smoother. And I get it. Linux is a huge topic that's often confusing to newcomers. There's distributions and desktop environments to keep track of, and all kinds of quirks. But switching to Linux doesn't have to be a chore. My latest ebook will give you some helpful tips that'll help guide you. For just $15, you could download this PDF that'll help you along your migration path, and it'll be a great asset for your Linux journey. And best of all, every purchase helps support Learn Linux TV and will help me make even more Linux-related content for you guys. So support the channel and get yourself a helpful ebook. It's a win-win. And now, let's get back to the video. The first screen is going to ask us for our language. In my case, it defaulted to English US, which is correct for me. If your primary language is something else, you could always select it from this list. You could also change your keyboard layout if you want to. Mine was automatically detected as English US as well, which is correct. But you could always add an input source and add another keyboard layout if you need to. Anyway, when it comes to this first screen, we should be all set, so I'll click Next. And in my case, my hard drive is encrypted. I previously had Ubuntu installed on this computer and I did encrypt the drive when I installed it. But what I'm going to do is erase the disk and install Fedora as the only operating system, so I shouldn't need to unlock the drive. So what I'll do is click Use Entire Disk, and then I'll click Next. 
As an option, you could encrypt your hard drive if you want to. And that's useful if you have important files that are going to be saved on your computer that you'd rather not be accessible to anyone else. And this encryption option is going to give you encryption at rest. What that means is that while you use your computer, it's not encrypted, but when you shut it down, it is. That way, if unfortunately someone stole your computer, they would not be able to access any files on your hard drive without your passphrase. However, in my case, this is just a demo, so I'm not going to worry about encrypting my drive, but it is something that you could do if you want to. Anyway, I'll click Next. And here it's just giving me some information as far as how my hard drive is going to be partitioned. And since I chose the option Use Entire Disk, I should be all set. Now keep in mind, at this point, if you go any further, your hard drive will be wiped out as well as any files. Just make sure that you have a backup of all of your important files before you begin. So think about anything that might be important, also saves for any games that you might be playing, things like that. Once you're sure that you have everything accounted for, we could click this button right here that says, I understand that all existing data will be erased. And then we'll click this button right here to begin the installation process. At this point, Fedora is installing on my computer. It's going to take some time for this process to complete, so what I'll do is fast forward it in post, and I'll be right back. All right, so it looks like the process is complete. So I could click this button right here to exit the installer. And next what I'll do is shut down the computer. I wanna make sure that I have a chance to remove the installation media, so that way it doesn't boot into the installer again. So I'll shut it down. And here we go, the moment of truth. Let's see if our installation was successful. And here we go. Here we have the first screen that you see once you install Fedora. It's going to ask me just a few questions and then my installation will be ready to go. It's going to confirm the language, which in my case is correct, so I'll click Next. We also get another chance to change our keyboard layout. So if yours is anything other than the default, you could go ahead and select your particular option. Anyway, in my case, I'll click Next. And now it's asking us which Wi-Fi network we want to connect to. I did choose that during the installation, but the settings didn't persist, so I'll need to connect again. And now that I'm connected, I'll click Next. And here we have some privacy settings. I'll leave it up to you to review the verbiage here and make the appropriate choices, but in my case, I'm going to leave these options on their defaults, and I'll click Next. When it comes to setting our time zone, all we should have to do is click on the map wherever we're located geographically. It doesn't have to be exact, you just want to make sure that you're selecting the appropriate time zone, and that's what I've done, so I'll click Next. Here on this screen, it's asking us if you want to enable third-party repositories, basically repositories that are not controlled by Fedora themselves. Now I do recommend this option because it'll give you access to additional software. So I'll enable it and then I'll click Next. And here it's giving us a chance to create our very first user account for a computer. I'll type in my name. You can fill out your first and last name if you want to, but I'm just keeping it simple. Next, we're going to create a password for our user. So I've typed in mine and I'll click next. And that should be all there is to it. I'll click this blue button and then I'll be able to start using Fedora. And the next thing that'll appear is a getting started tour. And that's going to give you some information regarding the GNOME desktop. Not going to spend too much time on this, but I do want to show it off. Again, it's just going to give us some information about the GNOME desktop and its various features. And here it's letting us know we can access the Activities Overview screen by clicking on the upper left-hand corner or by simply pressing the Super key, also known as the Windows Logo key. When you press it, you'll see this screen right here, and that's the Activities Overview screen. Anyway, I'll click Next. And to save some time, I'm just going to keep clicking through the remaining screens. And there we go. And now we're all set. Fedora 43 is installed and ready to go. And one of the first things that you might want to consider doing is clicking on the Activities Overview screen, this button right here, and accessing GNOME software. 
And GNOME Software is essentially the utility that you'll use to install software. Also, it'll give you an option to install updates as well. All you have to do is scroll through the list right here. And if you find something that you want to install, you simply click on it. So for example, if you wanted to install Flight Gear, you could click on it and then click the Install button. Also, it's possible that you might have updates available. In my case, I do. I'm not going to install all of the updates in my case because that's just going to add additional time to this tutorial. But all you have to do is click the Restart and Update button to install all available updates. We also have some firmware updates available as well, which is really cool. But anyway, as you can see, you can manage all of your software through GNOME Software. When it comes to accessing applications that are already installed, we could click right here under Show Apps, and that'll show you all the applications that you have available. Now, I'll leave it up to you to explore Fedora 43, and that's exactly what I recommend that you do. But either way, I hope you really enjoy your new Fedora installation. And there you go. In today's video, we set up Fedora 43. I really hope you enjoy your brand new installation. As I mentioned before, Fedora is a fantastic distribution and you're going to love it. If you liked this video and it helped you out, then be sure to click that like button to let YouTube know. That'll not only help this channel, it'll also help YouTube understand that Linux is important and we need more Linux related content here on the platform. I would really appreciate that. Anyway, thanks again for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one.